Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is uh, Max Jones. Um, I'm 24 years old. I've been in Nevada uh, in Las Vegas for two and a half years. I'm originally from uh, Florida Keys, uh, Florida. Um, I uh, got my start in endurance uh, athletics in, uh, in high school. Um, I actually played basketball originally and I wanted to find a sport to condition me for, uh, for basketball and uh, I came to find out that I was a little better at uh, cross country and track than basketball and then I ended up uh, going to run for a division one program um, in, in Florida called uh, Florida Gulf Coast University and I did that for uh, four years and that was a pretty tough experience and it was uh, it definitely made me grow a lot in terms of mental toughness, goal setting, delayed gratification, a lot of those things. Uh, at Florida Gulf Coast University, while I was running uh, Division I cross country and track, I also was a strength conditioning coach, um, actually working for other athletes, and I coached, um, I was a strength coach for the uh, men's basketball and the uh, women's volleyball, so I got a different uh, type of athlete compared to the endurance athletes that we all are. And then I, um, I fell into exercise physiology in my major, and um, I pursued an uh, internship to uh, come out to Las Vegas. And then I, I fell into the triathlon world here, into the coaching realm and the personal training realm as well. For my personal training and strength and conditioning side, I work for a group called uh, Extraordinary Trainers. It's uh, based out of uh, Las Vegas Athletic Clubs. Um, we are a concierge training service that kind of um, benefits individuals from endurance coaching, strength conditioning, clinical exercise, kind of a um, concierge-based service. Training, uh, in the last two and a half years, I really think I've taken, you know, I'm able to take people from a, you know, they come to you for, a, you know, from an extrinsic standpoint, they want you to be the person that takes them to a next step, but at the, at the end of the day, I think it turns into you, you take their, and you help them create their own intrinsic motivators. You know, training with people is a, is a short-term endeavor, but if you're able to make an effect that lasts a lot longer than the training that, um, the training, the time of training they have with you, then that's really what, what it's all about, you know. I like to use SMART goals, you know, um, specific, measurable, attainable, um, realistic, and timely. We'd like to put a, uh, a timeline on progress or what our, what our goal is for, the, for uh, the client. And we like to reassess and make sure they're on, on time or on task. The biggest thing is you can give, the more you educate your clientele or athlete, um, the better off they're going to do on their own. And at the end of the day, training people, coaching people is a short-term endeavor for whatever their goals are. If you're able to educate the athlete or client, to be, a, to be a healthier individual, to be a, a smarter athlete, um, they're gonna be better off their whole long term. And in terms of, they're, gonna, they're always gonna refer you and say they, you know, they did a good job with this. And then in terms of a business standpoint, you're always able to um, provide a highest level quality work and have the referrals and the resume to back that up. I also coach an endurance uh, running group called uh, Rock and Runners. Um, I'm one of the coaches on the downtown location and I also go to graduate school for uh, kinesiology and I'll be finishing that up in May of 2015. I'm certified with the National Strength and Conditioning Association as a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Um, in addition, um, I'm also certified by the American Council of Exercise as a certified personal trainer. Um, in addition, I'm also CPR and AED certified. Um, I do have aspirations to get into uh, USAT triathlon coaching. Um, and also um, USATAF, uh, un uh, United States Track and Field certifications as well. My real competitive running background started when I went to the Division I level of Florida Gulf Coast University and I ran cross country and track and that was a big uh, wake up call of what the, the rest of the country and some international students were able to run at the level and it was, uh, it was pretty daunting to start. We were running 80, 90, a couple hundred mile weeks and it was, it was a really tough set up for four years and I really put my you know, uh, emphasis on my college career into that athletically. When I came out to Las Vegas, I, I did try and run initially at a higher level and um, I ran into people through the triathlon realm um, that said, hey, you know, you should come try this. And um, it was really nice to get excited again about a sport. Um, I had been running for a long time consistently and um, when you get excited about something and being as competitive as I am, it's nice to get good at something again and learn and, and, and be the student and, and I really learn from all the, a, lot of the, a lot of the experts in town here that have helped me along, along the way. Um, I've been racing triathlon for two years. Um, 
I've won my age group every time I've competed, except one time at Pumpkin Man last year. And I just did my first Olympic uh, a couple weeks ago at Cocopelli, and I got third in um, third overall. And um, definitely see myself improving. I've had a lot of good help from uh, people in town, guys like Chris Fetter, Nancy Dickinson, Denny Silva, Paul Duncan. A lot of guys are a lot of guys and gals that have had a lot of experience in the area and that have really kind of uh, tutored me along in the way. And hopefully, I continue to improve um, as time goes on. I've, uh, I've only been riding uh, bikes as long as I've been doing triathlon, so two years. I really didn't. Uh, I really didn't ride bikes at all growing up. I don't think I owned a bike when I was younger, so the whole cycling thing is a pretty new, a uh, whole new endeavor for me. I've been running uh, my whole life, so getting used to the cycling thing has been a, uh, it's been a big challenge and an ongoing, ongoing uh, battle. Being 24, I have plenty of time to do that and hopefully uh, learn the right habits and uh, be, able to, be able to use them on race day and hopefully some of those guys that are kicking my butt will be a little bit closer. I'm a pretty big introvert and I'm a, I'm a trained extrovert in terms of I, uh, I get nervous public speaking, I get nervous being around people. I'm probably one of the most competitive people I've ever met or I ever planned to meet. I write things down and put them on the wall and they stay up there and it grinds my gears every day when they don't happen. If anyone needed to know anything about me, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 24, I'm extremely ambitious and there's probably not too many things I'm not gonna get in this life if I really wanna do it. Athletically, uh, on a personal level, um, I'd like to um, go to uh, age group nationals for my age group and, and compete at the highest level as possible at the Olympic distance, world championships in 70.3, and I'd like to also qualify for Boston Marathon in the next three to four years as well. So a uh, pretty sizable uh, goal setting, uh, but I think with proper programming and and a good, uh, good foundation of, of knowledge and a lot of good friends and coaches that can help me out, I think I can get there. Something a lot of people don't know about me is I, uh, I get really, I get a lot of anxiety and really nervous before a race. And, I, and it, sometimes I, I get sick, physically sick, before the race. Um, and that usually happens before I walk to the water. And if that happens and, and then I, I feel very relaxed and I do get kind of a smirk on my face because I know I'm kind of in my element. I'm kind of in the place where I, I want to be um, and, I, and um, I've done everything I can at that point in time to be ready for what I'm about to do. And that's why usually why I'm grinning. It's usually a kind of a quiet confidence, kind of a nice little calm before the storm, if you will, kind of attitude, hopefully. I try and surround myself people with people that are um, a lot faster and more knowledgeable to sport. So if I can drink in as much as I can from you know their, um, their experience, their athletic ability, um, and in time, you know, hopefully I'll give them a run for their money, but it's okay for right now as long as they're kicking my butt and helping me out. So that's what, that's what, that's what it's all about. I currently race for uh, Las Vegas Cyclery Triathlon team. Um, it's been a, it's a, it's filled with a pretty solid group of guys. Um, a lot of, a lot of overall and podium racers and a lot of them been doing the sport a lot longer than me. So it's been a pleasure and a really nice, uh, really nice honor to be on a team with guys that are that good and hopefully I represent them well. If, if you goal set and you, and you work your butt off and, you, um, and you're determined, you never you know, let everyone, you know, anyone put you down, um, you really can achieve kind of really whatever you want. And as long as you set a goal that's uh, smart and measurable and you do it the amount of time and you surround yourself with the people that are gonna motivate you, um, then you really can do whatever you want. You know? If you want something, make it tangible, write it down, um, I would say 99% of the time you need to, whatever goal it is, either be it athletic, professional, personal, you need to look at someone that's either done it, has the information to do it, or the education level to kind of guide you through the process. I think a lot of people in life tend to just have these unrealistic ideas or dreams or they, they talk about certain things and the, the execution is never there. And I think that really the big difference between successful people and unsuccessful people are just the fact that they, the successful people executed what they said they were going to do as opposed to just saying it. 